Welcome to the Spiritual Street Spot, a place where you can rejuvenate your soul. Hosted by author M.B. Moses. This is a safe space for all. Peace, love, and happiness, family. I am so glad we're back again and hope that this podcast finds you in great spirits, finds you and your family in great spirits. We're truck, truck, trucking along with this new year, new month, and just, you know, getting real acquainted with uh, 2022. And so I'm excited. I'm excited. I am very excited. I'm always excited for newness. Hello. <laughs> Ask me in six months. No, I'm just teasing. But um, family, family, we're continuing. We have been learning a lot. Okay. And if you're not plugged into the Decoding Dreams podcast, you are missing out if you're listening from social medias because there is not a lot of full episodes of Decoding Dreams on social media. So come on over to Decoding Dreams podcast with your host, Memory. I'm so excited. We are continuing on with our work right where we left off. We have learned that it is January 2022 and we have learned that it is the two 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 that's really significant in the year 2022 and we started off by recapping refreshing and restarting and we learned about cleansing through smudging and then we learned about the lifestyle rituals what is a chakra you know we learned about that and and how we can take chakras and use them to our advantage or unclog or unblock uh-huh. or align our chakras if you miss that podcast go and look for that podcast because we're picking up right where we left off today's work is candle work for manifestation today's conversation is about manifestation manifestation because the universe loves us so much and there's so much abundance and there is unlimited possibilities for all of us and so therefore we're going to incorporate candle work into the subject topic for manifestation now before we dive into the candle work let's go ahead Mm -hmm. disclaimer um (laughs) so before we get into the candle work I just want to, you know, because remember, we are learning, we're starting all this good learning, just we want to learn on the layman's term, like my layman self, right? And just on the basic point, not to insult anyone's intelligence, so that we're all on one accord, right? As we start our year off, as we start our spiritual journey off for those that are starting, and for those that are joining, and for those that have been continuing with us on this spiritual journey to true self, I thank you so much. You all mean the world to me, your energy is ever felt and ever present. And so let's talk about this. Before we get started, I want to make a quick disclaimer. I just want to remind you for those that have been following this podcast, we when we talked about dream decoding, the dream decoding aspect, this is a spiritual podcast, right? So when we talk about all things dream decoding, we're learning on decoding dreams from the spiritual dream realm, knowing that everything is connected spiritually, whether you lay down and visit the spiritual dream realm, whether you are up and alert, we are energy beings connected to our spiritual selves. Okay, so understand that how everything is spiritually connected. And as everything is spiritually connected, when we talk about the spiritual meaning and symbolisms, whether it is in our waking state or in our non-waking state, when it pertains to colors, you're going to notice a pattern for those that have been following the podcast for a long time, that the pattern in the colors, the symbolic meaning, symbolic presence, essence of colors whether they be interpreted in the spiritual dream realm or the waking spiritual realm, you're going to find out that they mean the same. And then you're also going to find further meanings. And how 
And the only part that you break it down is, of course, in the spiritual dream realm, when you're dreaming of colors, you are most times, if you are present, but most times you're dreaming, you are present in there. You're describing the cl- colors as it pertains to you and as the symbols pertain to you and the meaning pertains to you in your spiritual dream realm. So now, but as it pertains to the spiritual waking realm out here, as we learned last time about the colors of the chakras as well, significant, hold that thought. Um, and you took the colors for the, we took the colors from the chakras and we described them with the colors to the matching crystals, right? So that combination of colors being closely linked will then come in to this part as it pertains to dealing with candle work. And I just wanted to make that clear so that you understand that the color symbolisms and meaning spiritually are consistent. You're going to find that they're consistent and, but depending on where you are, like today with the candle work, you're going to realize that we kind of going a little bit more in to the color work. When we worked on the chakra colors, it was real. Just green is for like two words, three words. Today we'll have about three or four words. But when you look at the meaning of those words, you can pin them against the color dream meaning and see like, oh, wow, it links up. Okay. So we're off to a good start. Just knowing that once you know your colors, you're on one accord in the spiritual dream realm, in the spiritual waking realm, and as it pertains to your chakras as well. So what is candle work anyways? What is this? What is she talking about, child? All right, let's just first start off with manifestation, right? So manifestation, what is manifestation? Manifesting those things that you want to come true or come into fruition, manifesting those things that your heart desires, your mind desires, your soul desires while you're on this journey, right? And so manifestation can be anything that you feel that spirit has led you to do. All right. So I have done the scripting in books and I continue to manifest and script in books. Scripting just means getting a notebook. Each year I get a fresh new notebook and I just write down what I'm doing this year in terms of what I want to see come to fruition this year. That's part of my scripting for manifesting. And I have always done the vision boards. Okay, so you could do vision boards, uh, put my stickers on there, fix it up, do whatever you want. Or you could do there's so many things you could do to manifest. Manifesting is just putting together those things that you want to see for yourself, either in the immediate future, near future or further, far future. Whatever it is that you feel that needs to be ever so present, present and manifesting is that thing that you build within yourself as a spiritual being to the point that you're spiritually touching it and knowing and building it that it manifests itself. Right. So I'm always excited about this part because I think I've told a story of I didn't have the words articulated before my spiritual journey, but I'd always been a person that I'm a big visual person and I'd always been a person that was visual. And now that I've been on the spiritual journey, understanding what manifestation is, I was like, oh, that's what that was. But I, I remember when I purchased my first home, my brand new home. I had a home built for me when I was 25 years old. And but before I was 25 years old and had the house built, when I was about my obsession with the home started when I was about 18, 19. Right. So I used to always um, dream of not in the spiritual dream realm, but just daydream of houses. I was infatuated by houses. I loved houses. I was like, I'm going to one day when I become a for real, for real adult, I'm going to buy me a house. That's just was always my thing. A lot of people that know me from my past will tell you whether it's coworkers and so forth. Uh, even when I worked uh, years ago as a clinician and we traveled way before I got my house, if we, we used to stop at gas stations before we went to our sites, I would always, no matter where I was, this habit was always with me. And like I said, I didn't know the words to articulate that. And I would always get the, like when you go inside of a gas station, they have by the free like auto traders and stuff like that. I don't know if they still have auto trader, but they would have the free like home books and stuff like that. So I would 
always get one. I don't care if I got one yesterday. I would get one that day so I could just, you know, thumb through it and just look at houses. And this is, you know, and when we go all the way back before years, before phones, um, this is where I was didn't have Google in my hand. No, I'm um, smartphone, you know, so it's kind of like just visualizing, looking at the homes and just thinking, oh, I wonder, I can't wait. I can't wait. And you know what's crazy about being so innocent and being young at that age? Um, I didn't even think about how I was going to get it. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, my gosh, this house is expensive. How am I going to buy it? I don't even have the money. I just kept looking and just saying, I'm going to get me a house. I'm going to get me a house. So I kept saying. And so as you have it combing through and thumbing through house guides, um, at 25, it manifested itself. And, be, and then when that came about, um, when that came about, I had a book. Like right before that came about, I, and I still have the red book. It's a notebook. And I, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy because when I look at that notebook today, it's a red notebook. And in that book, that particular book, it was for my house. Cause in that time I was considering kind of dabbling in the house market, looking at houses, uh, way before I got the, you know, like probably a year or two years before I made the commitment to actually go out and get a house. And so, um, I remember in the notebook, I penciled in, I'm not the perfect, you know, artist but a perfect I penciled in as much drew in as much as I could uh, how I wanted my house layout I remember putting a di I said in my dining room I remember like putting what the couch was gonna be the love seat the couch the coffee table the end tables and then I drew like an entertainment center and then I said if it's an open floor plan I remember but what my pride in um Joy was the divider bookshelf that I drew. I didn't know I could draw three dimensional on a paper. No, I'm just kidding. But it was something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I was like, oh, look at the edges. And so I had this like big like bookcase thing as a divider. And then I had um, in my mind everything. And then I used to love looking at new furniture too. And so um, I had my kitchen table. I said it would be like cute. And I thought, at that time, the bar stool uh, concept was like kind of coming in. And so I was like for a little nice, quaint four seater bar stool chairs and table and mat, you know, just thinking of the wood, light wood for my matching furniture in the house. How my I wanted a three bedroom house. I'd have one with like my office and all that other stuff. And then I would have a guest bedroom and I would go and look at um like uh what do you call them? bedroom covers sets and i picked a red one uh a red one i'll put that in the guest bedroom and then i'd pick a theme i love to like decorate i love decorating houses new houses and so um and then i decorated my bedroom in this red notebook and decorated my bathroom. I loved matching concepts of things, shower curtains to, you know, if it was leopard print, no, but I've never been an animal print person. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, so I love that. And I uh, matched up my guest bathroom, matched up my bathroom. And I just, you know, in this red notebook, two years later, locked in on some land or a lot, a lot. And where they would build the house. I found a building site. And it started. And as you have it, the model that I picked was a three bedroom, <laughs> two bath. And it had an open concept, an uh, open concept living room and um, kitchen. And I had my little red book and everything. So do you know what I did with that red book? So this is about, I moved in when I was about 25 to that house. But as, as I had that red book and when I was locking it, when I locked in the lot and everything, it, I forgot. It took like what? I think it was like six months for them to build it or whatever. But, um, oh, and I'd look for curtains too. I'm a big curtain person. I love just decorating houses. Like, I would like to do it for a living, but I don't think I'm that passionate. Just my, you know what I mean? Just like my space. Like, I like to decorate my space. You know what I'm saying? And so, um... So 
<laughs> so what happened was, you know, as they were building. So what happened was the year before, I want to say, I had just started like just really just stacking up on money, you know, because I was really contemplating. And then when they started building the lot, I used my red book to go shopping for furniture. I found my red comforter set, whatever it was, elegant. The one I wanted in my guest bedroom. I found, I bought all, I found, not bought there and then, but I found my dining room set, my, um, my living room set, everything for, you know what I mean? Like the whole entire house. I found all my furniture with the guide of that book the layout and everything. And then for my bedroom, I had put like, you know, I, I, at that time, I like like big headboards and just this fancy old headboard and footer and whatever. And so I found all of this, you know, so I locked it all in. And by the time I moved into my house, I had not only had drawn all of that stuff the way I wanted it laid out, not knowing what the floor plan was even going to look like, but I had the furniture similar, you know, wasn't a hundred percent, but it was similar to everything I wanted. The matching shower curtains to like the toothpaste and the little doohickey you put your toothbrush in and so forth. You know what I mean? Just, you know, and the the one that blew my mind was the guest bedroom cover because I had visually seen that one at Walmart and then I got it, you know. But, you know, it all came together. And once again, I didn't know a word to articulate it. In hindsight, 2020, you realize that was manifestation and the power of writing it down, drawing it. And then when I kept on looking at houses when I was about 18 and so forth, and every time I'd pick a house book out, I would never ask how I was going to do it. And that's the other thing, family. When you in the mode and in the mood and you manifesting, don't worry about how you're going to get it. Don't worry about, oh, I, I ain't got enough money right now to get it I don't have you know but no because you know I realized that was never my question which is weird right but it's just that like I d developed this thing about houses and that I was going to own a house and it happened you know and so of course with manifestation you got to do the works to get to where you need to go you know and so <laughs> so that happened and then I will never forget my dream car I had it as a screensaver and I had it as a poster. So back in the day, I remember when I got my first Dell laptop, it was chunky, chunky McGunky and heavy as old dinosaur, dinosaur laptop, Dell. The first thing I put on there was my dream car, my luxury dream car. That was my screensaver. Years later, let me see, probably... Three years later, I purchased the same exact car that was my screensaver, except it wasn't a convertible. The one I had on my screensaver was a convertible, and the one I went and purchased was a hard top. But it was the same model, same. It was a dream car. So, I mean, the power of manifestation is powerful if you work it right. The universe is always saying yes. There's limited possibility. Limited. No, there's not. There is unlimited how dare I? There is unlimited possibilities and they're waiting for you to grab a hold of them. So anyways, I digress. So we talked about that. Some of the scripting, whatever you see in your mind, however you see it in your mind, script it down. You know, you're writing it down. You're scripting it down. You're taking a look at it and let it manifest itself. Let it come into fruition. Taking into consideration how the law of attraction works, right? You also have to do your part to pull it through as well, right? And so furthermore, I mean, you can stay there in the, I could have stayed there just drawn away in that red book and never really took the steps to make it happen. Then that would have just been the end of it. That would have been enough for that moment, but not enough for where my desire and hopes were. So just, you know, go for it. Whether your thing is writing it down, penciling it in, in a notebook, doing a vis uh, vision board. Um, on my vision board, I have blank checks where I write each year, I write myself an amount. I write myself an amount. Somebody's going to write me that. And I put my name on it and I put the amounts that I want, right? I'm still waiting. <laughs> Hello, universe. <laughs> 
And so, but it's just about having fun along the way as well and making the steps to make it happen as well, right? So we're talking about manifestation. We talked about different methods of doing it, vision boards, writing it down, and heck, even, you know, pictures all around the house, whatever floats your boat, that's your manifestation. And so now today we're going to touch on, I'm looking at my notes here, we're going to touch on the candle work. We have talked about the beautiful symbolisms and meanings of colors, right? Being um, able to be used in the realms of uh, spiritual works and whether it be the spiritual dream realm or the spiritual waking realm either or the meaning symbols and symbol meanings slash symbolisms are the same so what is the candle works what are the candle and definitely works? one so, would wonder why the candle so for centuries and ages in time fire has always symbolized transformation and then if you want to go a little bit deeper on the candle work itself, most spiritual practitioners would state that the essence of burning is somehow believed to be connected to the physical world and the spiritual realm. It's always made sense for me in my little rituals that I do, especially the letters of forgiveness or the letters of closing out my past. Uh, in a quick debrief real quick, I'll write a letter out to the names, first and last name of person I forgive and write what the act is about. And to close that out, I would seal it off with a fire burning ceremony, which has always helped me get closure that's just a tad bit there so understanding that fire for centuries has been used to symbolize transformation and the reason why we're going for candle work manifestation there once again it's just to connect the two worlds from the physical world to the spiritual world your energy your essence energy to the energy of and the difference of the different colors symbolizing also different energies so when you do burn and actually we're going to talk about dressing when you dress you are also making this connection of your energy to the candles energy and that's connecting the physical world to the spiritual so what I usually do with my candles, I will have my candles and I take a paper clip, you know, unravel a paper clip and I write in, you know, love, peace, joy, happiness, oh, abundance, whatever color candle it is and whatever it is that um, the color of the candle, according to what I need, I will write it in with that all on the sides and so forth of the candle. But um, it's always been significant spiritually, just the burning of making that spiritual connection, that that um, energy connection between you and the burning candle. And so now the other thing is you want to look for unscented candles. And then one of the things that you want to do is dress your candle. It's called dressing a candle and you can use coconut oil. You can use, I use, you can use essential oils. I use jasmine essential oil and or frankincense essential oil. That's what I use. Uh, I like the purity of jasmine um, and the symbolism of jasmine. I like the symbolism of frankincense. Um, it's been around for ages. And so those are the two that I use. And what you do with the oils is you rub them up and down the sides off your candle. Do not rub them up by the part where you burn it or by the wick, just on the sides of your candle. That's how you dress your candles. And so in these candles, the what we're learning today is manifestation through candles and candle work. And so what is what are some of the examples? You know, one's wondering, what, well, what do I need a candle for? Well, how am I manifesting with a candle? Well, you can incorporate it in your, like, at my altar. Um, when I'm not doing my Florida water, when I'm at the altar, I will take a candle or two or whatever, you know, it is that I'm wanting to, you know, focus on depending on the manifestation and light the candle up at my altar minus, you know, removing my Florida water bottle away from there. 
you know, and so do a couple of um, chants on it, you know, peace, love, and happiness, peace, love, and joy. Oh, this is to new beginnings, protection, or oh, truth and peace, uh, prosperity, abundance. I'm calling abundance into my life. I'm calling prosperity into my life. I am abundantly blessed, you know. Uh, you know, I'm healthy. I'm healthier than I've ever been today. Just calling in, depending on the candle that I light and according to the color of the candle. So, you can have a lot of fun with it. You don't have to have the whole rainbow gamut of candles. You could purchase candles for what it is that you specifically want to focus on and or you can mix and match your candles depending just on what it is that spirit is leading you to focus on as it pertains to your manifestations, okay? So there is more complexities to candle work. Right now we're working on the surface of candle work and initiating candle work into our manifestation. Um, understand that the two things I would um, give you as a tip one of the things is remember that new moons typically represent newness. So if you are going for a new opportunity, something new in your life um, type of manifestation, you can always initiate candle works during that time. And also be sensitive. Remember, these are all things spiritual. So avoid doing candle works during the Mercury retrograde well, we time by going down the different candle colors and I don't use the entire colors I don't use the whole selection uh, my focus always is always being the gold candle the gold candle represents prosperity wealth personal power success enlightenment manifestation and so that's the candle that I use I use the green candle honey always okay and um you could liken that to what the green chakra stands for in the green color or the spiritual um waking realm colors as we worked on the color codes because you're going to see how they mimic each other but green has always been about money honey that's why I burn my candle, honey, and all growth. <laughs> but energy-wise, it's also earthy energy, but definitely prosperity as well. And then I use the white candle. That's why I told you all earlier with the candles. I forgot which podcast it was when we were talking about, oh, yeah, lighting your sage and so forth. Just use a white candle. Make sure your candles are unscented. And with the white, white always, you can never go wrong with white. White is represents purity or new beginnings, right? And so I've never used the black candle, but, you know, there's just a gamut of colors. And I don't use the black one because I use sage. I use Palo Santo um, for the cleansings. But black candles are for protection and or banishing bad energies so and or unhealthy situations. All right. So you do have an array of colors colored candles that you can use the best thing for yourself is to get the candles for your manifestation purposes and how you want to conduct them remember to dress your candle dressing it is anointing it with that oil right giving it a purpose right my gold candle this is for prosperity wealth and success right that's how i do it after you know scrape into the wax there as well with my paper clip my green candle as I dress it and anoint it with that oil this is for money prosperity earth's energy okay so you have white candles you have black candles red candles are for passion they can increase your creativity energy and you got pink candles you think of the rose quartz as pink you know you got the love theme in there romance in there self-love and you think of purple you could think of the chakra color purple intuition all right uh spiritual wisdom and deep knowledge you think of blue, you can even coordinate that with the chakras to the crystals as well, right? Remember communication, right? And then you got green, you got the orange. Orange, we have an orange chakra as well. All these colors, meanings, coordinate, right? Intellect, stimulating energy, 
joy. And you got yellow, intelligence, wisdom, confidence. I believe the yellow chakra is also confidence. Yep. And self-esteem. And that's just all the plexus. So there's a lot to play with it. Once again, anything you do, as we've been talking about rituals, which is a state of doing something religiously, but you're using your energy to do that habit, uh, to do that habit or to dabble in it or to use that ritual religiously. Uh, anything you're doing that we've been talking about is something that your energy, your spirit energy is using to conduct that for your betterment, for your betterment and for your family's betterment. And I will leave a note with everything that we have talked about so far as it pertains to the cleansing rituals, the lifestyle rituals, and now we're doing the manifestation rituals, is that no matter what you do and how you do it, just remember that it's all within love and pure energy. Um, teaching you all and talking to you all, especially when it pertains to things such as the candle work, these are not to be used for maliceness or vindictiveness. This is for your growth, for your approach to asking. In, In other words, words candle work is to be used responsibly. All of these are to be used responsibly. These are all for the, once again, better meant for you and your family. The universe has its way of dealing with those four folks that, you know, <laughs> done us dirty and so forth. Let karma be the one to take care of that. But what you have to do as the energy being on this planet is to be responsible for your spiritual journey, to use all of this in pureness with pure intentions, make your intentions known, make your intentions. So with known. the candle work, you can use the solo, just candles, picking your color candle to manifest and to say your prayer, say your mantra, say your whatever it is that you want to say. You know, like I gave you an example, whether let's say you say, you know what, this year I'm just doing gold candles because I'm going to focus on enlightenment and prosperity and success. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. You want to say prayers for that. You want to say, you know, mantras for that. You want to say affirmations for that. That's fine as well. Perhaps you want to focus on unconditional love and or romance. You want to pick the pink. Then that's fine as well. You focus on that. You pick the candle. You focus on that. Figure out when you want to do your candle work. Remember, you're working with candles, so be safe with candles. Don't light your candles anywhere close to Florida water. It's highly flammable. Have a further understanding. I think it's important to understand colors as they pertain to spirituality, a deeper understanding. And then I think it's important to understand your intentions for each part of the ritual that you'd like to practice for your life, for your spiritual journey, whether it be your spiritual journey to true self or your spiritual journey through this earth. All right. I love you guys so much. Stay blessed and thank you for tuning Do you keep in. getting a reoccurring dream and are trying to figure out why you keep dreaming of the same dream? Or perhaps are you dreaming of teeth falling out? Or have you ever had a dream where you were naked and perhaps even naked in public? OMG, how or embarrassing. perhaps you don't remember your dreams when you wake up. Well, check it out. Join us at the Dream Decoding Podcast, where I teach you on how to train yourself to have a memory recall and or I teach you on how to understand your dreams as it pertains to your current waking life. The importance of understanding the symbols and messages that we get in our dream realm is because sometimes these messages are coming to give us a good word in or to help us along the path. So don't miss out. Join us at the Dream Decoding Podcast with your host, Memory.